Hello and welcome to Insane in the Membrane, coming to you live from the last weekend of the Edinburgh Fringe. Just been waiting for the bagpipes to stop so I can get this recording done as I'm standing in the street as I do it. Uh, welcome to a bonus episode with Jordan Gray, finalist of this year's best show at the... Insane in the Membrane. I tell you what, I cannot tell you how proud I am of Jordan Gray. Honestly, she has absolutely dominated this festival. It's been insane. The amount of, uh, of tickets that have been sold, the amount of uh, just everything, the amount of everything that she's got. She's just won all the prizes. She won, she's won the, the big prize for Next Up Comedy. She even won the poster awards that I, uh, that I presented. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been incredible. Honestly, she has absolutely smashed it up. They put on extra show after extra show. Like, there's like two this weekend, 450 tickets each, and it's selling out. She sold out the entire run, extra shows, the lot. There's already uh, two weeks at Soho Theatre. There's all manner of other things that she's got going on, projects coming up, and it's, it's, in, it's incredible. Good honour, absolutely good honour. Um, so it was great to get a chat, have a chance to have a chat with her back in 2020. I mean, I've known her a couple of years now, so she's a mate, so it's great. And so it's great to see a mate absolutely smashing it up. Uh, so coming up in a minute is Jordan Gray. A podcast from producerpaul.co.uk. Oh, there we are. That's it. All right. I was waiting for it to turn on, but I hadn't turned it up. Yeah, there we go. How does that you sound? In a, I'm in, in a, a little hermetically sealed box. I am. I'm in a like boom. action figure. <laughs> I am. This is what it feels like to be that, be an action man. Yeah, you're in mint condition right now. Don't <laughs> open the door. Your value will drop. <laughs> if only someone had said that when I was born. <laughs> don't, don't let him out. You're gonna. He's gonna be fucked. <laughs> And now here I am. Um, good. Nice one, Jordan. Are you well? Are you all right? I'm very well, thanks. You can hear me okay, yeah? I can hear you lovely. Hear you yeah, lovely. man. You... I'm nice. got a little cup of tea. I'm well happy. I have as well. We've got fruit tea this time. Paul hasn't got any milk. I have never <laughs> known, and considering the jobs I've had and the, the places I've been, I've never known a more blokey environment than downstairs. Not No disrespect. To, I'm not saying that women, it's just women that buy milk, but these are fucking... <laughs> These leave these men on their own. They just, That's it. It just all falls apart. Well, milk's a very it's a very maternal thing, ain't it? It's a very <laughs> feminine product. Really, it is. It's the females of any species are more have more of an affinity with one another. That's very true. If anything, it's like you're interfering you with right. a cow. Um, yeah, it, it's fucking men. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but my you though, like I said, it is fruit tea though. We're drinking raspberry. Tea. Like a sort of Turkish thing, or like in the tea bag. Like in the tea bag. Did you ever have you ever had Turkish tea? It's just like yeah. sherbet in a packet, and you just put hot water in. <laughs> it's lovely though. I like it a lot. It, yeah. When I was little, I used to just think of it as sherbet, and my mum would bring it back, all expensive from Turkey. I just eat it by the spoonful. <laughs> Stick a bit of licorice in it. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Nice. Oh, what was that? What were they called? Dippers. Sherbert dip dab. Dip, yeah, dip. Sherbert dip dabs. Yeah, that's it. That's the one. Uh, yeah. Um, so where where did you grow up? I grew up in, uh, it, well, I was born in Orsett, oh, I, um, I don't, yeah. don't remember that, and then it was like carted around Stamfordly Hope, uh, I lived in a pub called the Orsett Cock Pub yeah. for about five years, it's an Indian restaurant now, but it was like on the middle of a roundabout, so I, I was like in no man's land, it was just I lived in the pub in the middle of all these different towns, uh, and then Tilbury, and then sort of my, my teenage years in Tilbury town. Yeah, right, um, I've spoken about Tilbury before. Having visited the place, because I we only lived, we moved to Essex two and a half years ago, mm. so I didn't really know much about the place. I knew South End and I knew various bits. I knew Basildon, and, and, but I'd never really had a look round. And then getting the trains, there's two trains in there from from Fenchurch Street. There's the one that goes Basildon, and then yeah. there, and then there's the Loop. <laughs> You've got to decide. Yeah, yeah, which part of Essex you want to go to, yeah. And you got to decide... Well, I suppose that's how trains work. We got, <laughs> yeah, well, that, that is exactly how trains work. You've got to decide where you're going <laughs> before you get on one. Um, mutually exclusive. That's, <laughs> that is weird that Basildon and Tilbury, never the twain shall meet. No, of. and with good reason. <laughs> That'd be a war. No disrespect to the people of Tilbury, but fucking hell. Mm. <laughs> it's not their was, fault. Yeah. It's, just been, it's just been forgotten. Isn't it? It's an amazing thing I read about psycho no psychogeography because it's like sandwiched between a tip and the water mm. or like the, the railway line and the tip and that's where the town is. I mean you've got no hope, have you? If that's your, you just feel like you're cut off. 
Yeah. Yeah. Just in a big bin. Well, yeah, because it was the it was the docks originally, wasn't it? So I suppose everybody that lived there was connected to the docks. Mm. Weird that it's a commuter town, so it's like it's, it feels very hopeless when you're there. But then you have got that big shining beacon of London nearby. So that so they charge for that. They charge that you're nearby to London. That's what they do charge you for, don't they? Cheeky mm. fuckers. <laughs> but it's yeah, it's easy to blame the people of these places rather than the, the people that should be investing in these places, investing in the people. Well, as we've seen, as we've seen with the skid, the kids, skids, the kids' uh, school meals. Well, yeah, you scary know, they though. Don't to, give a shit, do they? <laughs> scarier to talk truth to power. It's easier to be mad at the person living next door, isn't it? And yeah. I should remain doing so. <laughs> I'm going to continue doing that. <laughs> so you yeah. grew up in you grew up in Tilbury. I did. And, it was hard. And how was oh, that? Right. Yeah, you must be hard. I'm, I'm not right now. I am. I'm talking to you. Uh, no, it's, <laughs> it's difficult. It's difficult growing up because I weren't. Uh, I was a little. I had such an afro, and I've had an afro until recently. Because when you thing is, when you grow an afro out longer, there's only a certain point where gravity takes over and it starts to look normal. Well, at a certain length, it is just a, a, a an impenetrable afro, and you just can't have one of them anywhere out and about on the streets. It's not it, you, you're a beacon for not torment and ridicule. No, yeah. it's really hard, and I couldn't do anything about it. Well, I because I can sort of relate to that. I was talking about this the other day. I grew up in Orpington, which is a small town just out it's just on like the south east London Kent border and because it was a small town like you couldn't you know, they didn't really they didn't really respond well to different mm. and I remember uh, when bros were, were happening and I yeah, was man. I was into bros and my girlfriend at the time was into bros <laughs> Do you have the little b- b- bottle tops I had, and shit <laughs> I, yeah I did the Grosch bottle tops I did no I had a pair of they weren't even. I couldn't afford proper DMs with the metal bits on them. I had mm. like I had like these like these like fake ones. Nice. So I had them and a Stars and Stripes shirt and and uh, Levi's and uh, had my, nice. and yeah and trying to get my hair into a quiff. But I didn't know you could go to the hairdressers and ask for that. I didn't know what it was. Um, but yeah, even that, I, even dressing like that, I used to get ridiculed. So I used to not. I used to go out like go to London dressed like that. I wouldn't go out around the town. It's so bizarre. It's like like um, white blood cells attacking a foreign body, isn't it? In the blood, yeah. just this mentality of this doesn't matter if it's good or bad. If it's different, it doesn't fall in line. Mathematically, it won't tessellate. You know, it's like a load That's of squares. It. You yeah. can stack them, but a triangle is going to f everything up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And for some reason, which is I've just been talking about this with Rob Rouse actually. It's fear, isn't it? really yeah. they're just Gosh, scared it's, they're, they're, it's not because they necessarily dislike what you're doing but this it scares them yeah and parents are quick to say very sweetly but misguidedly it's like oh they're just jealous like, no they're not yeah. <laughs> none of them want this <laughs> they so grow up with a massive inflated sense of self because i've got an amazing afro they do want an afro <laughs> <laughs> yeah no <laughs> no one wanted, no one else wanted to dress like bros but didn't have exactly. the balls exactly ah oh. I think about Bros all the time. That when will I be famous is in, just in my head. I think I swear it's playing in the background of my mind all the time. <laughs> is that because you want to be famous? Oh, yeah, yeah. undoubtedly. Yeah, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. <laughs> if you think it, it'll happen. Yeah, that's, I learned that from Bros. <laughs> connection. Uh, you think you're a superstar. Yeah. Well, that's There's only how, one of me. Yeah, that's how I approach gigs. Uh, I always walk on like, in my head, I'm, I'm Liam Gallagher. Yeah. You do, yeah, yeah. you're un... What's, I keep going to say unavoidably confident. It's unquestionably. You are just unquestionably confident. But you don't you don't see you and think, oh, he's right up himself. But it's all right because he's talented. You just think, he's nice. Oh, bless you. He's Thank confident you. enough to know yeah. what he's doing. I think that just comes with time. You just go, I've been doing it long enough. I know I can do it. And I know... Like, I've had more good gigs than I've had bad now. Like, the bad gigs get further and further away you, you, yes. ne- you never you never turn your back on them because you're like any moment one of them's going to turn up but yeah you know about that at the office but you get to a point like any job you've been doing it long enough you get good at it and then you get confident that you can do it and i think that's it i think just being able to walk up and go yeah i, I can do this i've got it well, comedy's like yeah. like I, I, my first few gigs were all fantastic and that's not necessarily a great thing because then you're like, at any given moment, anything around the corner is going to tear your whole psyche apart if, yeah. I could, if, if it's a lukewarm reception, which I then quickly started to receive. Uh, thankfully, it weren't a trend, it's, but it's just... I was going to yeah, say, because you're brilliant. That's, that's, I've seen you smash it, so... 
Thanks very much. Difference mm. between you and me, though, of course, is I signal that very much to the audience <laughs> that I, I'm very <laughs> aware of that. Um, I don't think you could say humility is a part of my act. I know in real life that is I'm very lucky and very fortunate and loving it, but I can't escape as a as a character. I'm always pointing out how well I'm doing. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, like you say, it's part of you. That's your that's part of what you do, and yeah. it, and the way you do it is funny. That's the that's the thing. It is Bless funny. You. Um, it's fun, isn't it? It's it is cool. But that's the and that's what is started to that was before all the shit happened. That was what was starting to be missing from comedy. It's actually fun. Will you be topping your show, or have you already with that thing that you put out on social media? That what post thing? that you made. That's beautiful. The post you made about how being a comedian, it's all about us sharing like that connection of otherness together. Oh and yeah. Being separated, we start to forget about that, and then that place disappears. You can't just retrain because it's like it's our mental health is all tied to each other in a way i like yeah. our happiness that's beautiful oh I thank you my friends were sharing it oh that's like, nice it's it... having its moment on oh, social nice. media it's just that it was that i suddenly was talking to people in green rooms and and i was talking to rosie jones and people like that and and everybody said the same thing they were like oh, i've really i've really enjoyed this not just the gig but actually meeting up with everybody because you don't really see each other until he's really you know well, like you and i are mates but we don't hang out you know we I'm not saying we wouldn't, but we just don't. We just don't have time or whatever we're doing. But when we're at gigs, it's, we enjoy each other's company. And it's, it's and you come so away true. going, oh, I enjoyed that. Oh, it's really good to see Jordan. You know, it's really lovely to see. And and you're, and that's the same with everybody. We, you know, we're just lovely to see everybody. And, 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 and we, we started to miss that because we, we don't fit in. Or I, I certainly don't ever feel like I've ever fitted in to what people would call normal life. Even though yeah. I tried and... And people see me and go, oh yeah, he's just a he's a bloke, and he obviously he does whatever. And but inside, it's just this turmoil. Yeah, but I didn't have that in comedy. I in this industry, in the entertainment, industry, I suddenly was a, around other people that I suddenly went, oh yeah, they, I feel I feel at one with these people. We're, we've all turned our little curses into superpowers, so it's sort of like a assembling of the Avengers, isn't it? You just you feel better, you stand out for good reasons, the reasons that you've stood out for that have been bad your whole life they, they're suddenly like these great strengths that connect you yeah. it's such a great uh, analogy somebody used well just basically to say any anywhere in the world any party that you go to where you're the only person there if you hear there's another comedian you'll gravitate to them and you're 90% sure that you'll be able to chat to them for the night yeah yeah, just true. It doesn't matter. Any style, you're like, no, another comedian. They understand my, my pain. <laughs> you just walk... You don't even have to tell them. You just go out and go, oh, yeah. you're a comedian. They go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's all that needs to be said. Yes. <laughs> I suppose oh, it's the same with musicians or or anybody, really. Anyone anyone, anyone who works anywhere. I suppose there's, a, you know, there, it's, there's comfort in that connection, isn't there? Do you reckon? Do you reckon that's... I like, think so. I hope maybe so. in the arts. Certainly in the arts. In yeah. The creative thing. But I, I did music for... 10 years and I was beautiful loved it I always have to preface it by saying it was wonderful but I just prefer being a comedian mm. but I felt very lonely it is a very solitary thing even though you're surrounded by you know technicians and potentially other band members and stuff it's still very lonely but comedy nah comedy is yeah. a, a world it's its own little theme park it's nice isn't it And it, but I, yeah. get, I totally get that loneliness bit as well because we're on the road a lot on your own as well quite a lot of the time and I remember I remember I supported Tom Stade Okay. And we'd had a really good, really good time, and he's a mate anyway. So we had a nice time, and then like wow, we were buzzing, and uh, the gig went really well. And then, and then I had to go. I was going somewhere else the next day. So I, and then I remember like about an hour and a half later, I'm sat on my hotel bed, and I'm on my own, and it okay. was it was in like a travel lodge or something like that. So it wasn't very glamorous, and I'm just sat there like, oh fuck. So I'd gone from that <laughs> buzz and around everybody and everyone going, oh that was brilliant, that was brilliant, that was brilliant, and then I'm on my own. And it yeah. was, I was like, "Fuck!" And you, and you sort of the next day when you're doing something really remedial or hard work, and you're like, "How can my life consist of these two different modes?" Yeah, like a huge audience of raucous applause, like you're sort of the new, you, you're like a religious yeah. figure, and then you're like, "I'm what?" But I'm washing my own mugs like an <laughs> idiot. I just, it doesn't feel like it gels. I've done like a bit of reality <laughs> TV, and it's like Disneyland. It's like lights and crazy. You're in a big video game, and there's thousands of people, and then the next day, like. Would I prefer it was always normal or yeah. always Disneyland? I don't well, know. Well, that's it. How was it on the? Because you did the voice. You got you got into the final, didn't you? 
semi-final. Semi-final. Which is sort of the real thing if you round it up. <laughs> well, the thing, thing is, yeah, it's still, yeah. you still did well. You still, you know. I was very pleased, yeah. It's, yeah. It was all right. Good, good run. Um, and it, no bad stories. You hear horror stories about reality TV. I, I had a great time. It was really nice. Hard work, though. But it's yeah. a, such a bubble. And your whole life just becomes about getting to the next step and nothing else. Mm. Uh, and, yeah, coming crashing out of that. And then the next... Because also TV people, right? You know it's like TV people, they... The ones that are communicating with you about where you've got to be and what you've got to do, or or do you want to come in and go for this? They're nice. They're so nice, like affable, lovely people because they they make you feel good and they, yeah. they get a better performance. All that stops when you're not part of it anymore. So I call oh, up and shit. be like, oh, I think I left a shoe, and they're like, oh, we'll get back to you in a month. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, you were my mate before. <laughs> yeah, you're really nice. It, that was weird to not be carried around like a god for, i have you know. experienced that lately recently with something i won't say what mm. and they like you say they are lovely people but i kind of get the feel i'm like mm, yeah you're you're i'm no disrespect to them if they listen to this but i'm like you're doing a job yeah and I know they're good you, at it. yeah and they're good yeah. at it and i know what you're doing i'm aware and it and I'm like, I can see, the, and then so I can totally see what you mean when you're in that bubble. Everyone's, everyone's your mate. Everyone's telling you this, that, and the other. And then you're not in it anymore, and yeah. all that's gone. Yeah. And now you say, then you're just you're sat there washing your mugs. And you're like, hang on a minute, where did all the people go? They were, and that must be the same for everybody. And they, you know, like wherever, however far up the ladder they get, you know, like you can. This is why a lot of people that get that taste of fame then become you know drug dependent or alcoholics or yeah because they or, can't cope hopefully you can cross addict onto like i'm a workaholic now unashamedly because i'm a, i'm good at it that's yeah. the thing you can be a bad workaholic because you're just busy you're not actually productive you're just doing lots but not yeah. getting anywhere I'm, I'm enjoying my workaholism it's getting me but yeah just that taste it changes your life it's like learning there's no god like <laughs> once you once you know what fame is like and it is it's oddly empty and full at the same time because you can translate it into like, amazing experiences but it's not like anything actually changed yeah uh, and chasing that oh just imagined your whole life everything being just comfortable not exciting just knowing that there'll always be someone to tell you that you're quite good at what you're doing mm. in that moment that's that's warming that makes me feel good it's lovely isn't it <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Uh, and just telling you that your choice of outfit or your hair looks like well done for that, doing that, what you did, what you put on today. What you, oh, you zipped your, you, you done your shoes up well. <laughs> like, I know. You don't yeah. have to keep telling me. Yeah, go on, tell me again. But that, but that, um, but I've seen this with Jade is that I suppose that again, the further up you go and then people start to make money from what you're doing, as well as you're making money as well. But people are making money from you, so then they're they're more encouraged to push you on and 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 tell you how great you are, and and then you know you see it all the time. You see, then then and then these people end up surrounded by everybody saying how great they are, how great they are, how great they are, and then they kind of lose touch. Yeah. With reality. And then, but you got right. Say like Liam Gallagher at Oasis. I, I when I was little, I used to think I'm not allowed to behave like that. They're being so arrogant and naughty and saying naughty things. And then as I got older, they're like, no, they they believe that. Yeah. And but so unwaveringly that I believe it as well. <laughs> so I'm like, good luck to him. I think Noel Gallagher is one of the funniest like guys, but he will just constantly say, yeah, he's a he's a rock star. He's like, I'm a, exactly. I'm a, I am the rock star. Last time I saw Jade, she did say that we should go and have a bath together, and I, that's yet to come to fruition. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the at the spa that's down near down near you. There don't have to be a spa. Could just be a bath. Just go and have like, a bath. To spa. But it was a really out. It was a really left field suggestion that I'm sort of keen on exploring. I think, yeah, because she really loves going to the spa, and there is a spa not far from you, and that's and that's where they went with her and her right. mate. And I think that yeah, I think yeah that that would definitely be on the cards. She'd love to go and have a go and have a bath. A little business bath. Kind of a business like bath with you. Business, have a little sushi in a business on a little floaty <laughs> floating thing like what you carry your beers in, but a little sushi in a business bath. <laughs> Isn't it mad? The, some of the things that we talk about in this, <laughs> in our industry. Just white people problems, man. Yeah, uh, so I, I know. I'm I so talking about privilege, yeah. I know, and that, and that. Some I was talking about that the other day, and I'm like, well, yeah, you can have this. You, these are the conversations that you can have. That's what privilege means. 
yeah, the, this whole thing of uh, the Danish, I think the Danish call it haig, but it's this idea of turning comfort into an art form. You know, you see Instagram pictures of people holding a coffee and fluffy socks this time of year with the leaves all arranged, and it's like, this is what cosiness looks oh, like. Oh, yeah. Imagine the privilege in your life of being able to turn being comfortable into like a sport. <laughs> like yeah, <whatever>. yeah. <laughs> some people will never have that. No, some people haven't even got, well, they haven't even got mugs. You know, some even got pe- Instagram. No. Some, well, this is it, isn't it? This is some people haven't, you know, sort of, again, sort of Rob Rouse on, on his mm. episode, and we were just saying, like, over there still, you know, we're all, everyone's talking about, you know, this, this issue and that issue, but there's still people outside that aren't inside. Yeah, that's are, as clear as you could put it as yeah. well. That's, and you're like, it. you know, everybody should be inside, and they're not. And yet we're all arguing about some bollocks. That's really sad when you say that, because it, that, like, in a, it's, it's sad anyway, obviously it's a sad thing. Don't, don't, don't misconstrue my laughter. It's cause no, that's no, cause no. Of, that's because of discomfort. But it's like, <laughs> the, um, no, it's really, because you say it, you boil it down to its key component, and then it's unarguable. There's no, like, other level. We're like, yeah, but, but, like, no, there's just people outside that should be inside. Yeah. That's, a, that's how, what a child would say, and you'd go, oh, yeah. Is exactly how it should That's be. That's really sad. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? And it's like, I was hearing that story on the news about that family that got killed crossing the channel. Oh, gosh, they yeah. just They just went, fuck it, we have to go. Mm. And the weather was terrible. And you're like, and they're only in their mid-30s, these, these, these parents, and their kids are only... And, and you're like, and then there are still people online going, well, you know, there are proper ways to get into this country. Blah, blah, blah. They haven't got those, they haven't got those luxuries they're, yeah. they're just so desperate for a better life for them and their children that they they fucking they came across the channel in shitty weather on a on a in a shitty boat. They did the most almost like prehistorically instinctive thing. Yeah. To do and are being criticised for it because yeah we're never going to reach that level of impoverishment. No. Imagine that. There's an advert now, actually, on the radio I've been hearing that, and it's a it's a mum packing stuff, and the kids going, "Mum, why are we going on holiday with all your jewellery? Why are we? Why are you putting the jewellery in the lining of your of your bag? And why you, why is that? You know?" And the mum's crying, and you're like, "Yeah, yeah that's how it would be." It you know, it's like a middle class mum. Oh, I get, I get it. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. What I mean. And it's yeah, it's like, how would you cope if this is how you had to uh, if you had to do this? Mm. And it really, you're like, yeah, you would, what would you fucking do? You've got to look at your house. Because I, I, I was reading a thing, A.A. Gill, he was a journalist and a, a, a writer and stuff, and he was talking about, um, not Syria, but something like that, and he was just saying, like, these people start off their journey with everything they can carry, all their belongings, their bags and everything, and as they go along, they just have to shed stuff and then pick the best stuff till they end up with just, like, a bag. With their, like a, with their with their with their most crucial, important belongings in it. It's like a a, a tragically existential buckaroo. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fucking tragic, man. That's horrible. And, in it, in it, but it's, it's like just, we yeah. can't translate our comfort into help for that. There's money, give money. Of course, you can volunteer time. But like our circumstantial level of like our, our circumstances. The, the the real existential thing that hurts and like confuses us is like we can't trade it you can't cash it in and no. share some with those people so like, no we are just we are we just have that we were born at this place and at this time and you should you can't be ashamed for that because that is circumstantial but you can certainly like you, that doesn't know but that doesn't change the how bad you feel yeah yeah, Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? yeah. so it's like who's to blame no one because of circumstance well and lots of people at the top that are like making it that way but but even still, yeah, just us us being born in this place and time is is not a thing to be ashamed of. But that doesn't take away the fact that you do feel bad because mm. that's a human instinct. What a weird kerfuffle to be in. What a weird thing yeah, to be in. Yeah, mad, isn't it? That yeah, you yeah, we didn't we we it's just pure like I say pure chance that we are where we are and they are where they are, and yet yeah, I don't know. All we can yeah. do is do our do our best. Yeah, be, be good people. Be good people. Yeah. Be as good as be as good at. at at being yourself as you can. Yeah, true. Very true. Yeah. Oh, and well. if you're bros, then <laughs> you, you've sort of like divided labour between two people as well. <laughs> so like, they're, they're both really they're, good at being the same person. Yeah, they're twins, aren't they? They are twins, yeah. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you could play the drums and sing, but they don't have to because they're two people. They're the same person, but they're split in two. Yeah, 
That's Mate. That's for all of us. <laughs> well, do you know what? That leads yeah. us. I this I want to because I want to talk to you about. I want to talk a bit about because this is. I don't even know where to start. You this know. is great. No, I love this bit. This, this is the favorite. bit. Yeah. This is the bit where Rich Wilson starts to panic um, because he doesn't know how to be. Uh, he doesn't know how to start the conversation. And this is the problem, isn't it? We don't know how to start the conversation. Um, that is so true. People seeing you, I swear, people seeing you do it in real time is far more useful mm. than labouring on your own and trying to figure stuff out and have a very sterile conversation. People yeah. need to see somebody chatting to yeah. someone and, and pitfalls and climbing out of them and helping each other. Ah, oh, Exactly. Like and that's how it, this is the thing. We I, Again, Rob Rouse and I spoke about this on his episode and we were saying that he had a conversation. You love Rob Rouse. <laughs> you love that, man. You just won't stop going on about him. Well, literally, I've just spoken to him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just before this. Um, and that's it. We coming out at the same time as this, actually. We, uh -huh. but he said, he said him and his, they had dinner a few, a few months ago. And him and his mates, they're all, they all get into a conversation about trans rights and transgender and, and they didn't, and they, and they were having a conversation about it. And he said, yeah. yeah, this is a conversation that you couldn't have. You couldn't have it online. You can't ask questions. You have to kind of come at it knowing everything. You have to know all the pronouns, how, every, how everyone wants to be identified. And you, have to be, and you can't make any mistakes. And you get a million caveats before you start. And yeah. Like, yeah. And you go, oh, no disrespect. And, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. and you go, but, you know, I just, you know, that's, it's a, it's, a, it's a conversation that has to be had, but no one knows how to have it. And, and just before you say it, then very quickly, then it's the same thing as what I was just saying about we are circumstantially we're better off, and that's no one's fault, and yet we feel bad when you get misgendered as a transgender person. It's no one's fault unless it's deliberate, which is a different conversation. Which yeah, it never usually is, and yet it's heartbreaking. But it's no one's fault. So if you've not got quite a sophisticated um, understanding of social like interaction, you just take that hurt as like, oh, that person's trying to hurt me. Well, yeah. But, but the heartache doesn't go away. So you've sort of got to live your life with like, if someone misgenders you, you, you have to make them feel better and say, oh, it's all right. No, don't worry about it. But my heart is still breaking on the inside because, oh, they think I'm a man. So it's, it's in no one's to blame. How effing effed up is that, that well, it is all fucked up isn't it and i think extra heartbreak that's coming yeah. from nowhere and we were we were talking about the fact that like, we've you know we're a bit older i mean i'm you know i'm 48 so you know, growing up we were we were taught like that is a man that is a woman mm. and then anybody sort of and then there was there was conversations about people and it was always like oh they're not comfortable in that in the body they're in but it was all but even that was still very they're in a man's body but they feel like a woman or they're in a woman's body they feel like a man then yeah. that was it there was no kind of it was, there was no mention of fluid there was no mention of <laughs> that, that'd be a different conversation <laughs> that's very personal I mean... <laughs> I mean... Flu like fluidity fluidity like... Oh, sorry not okay. fluid yeah. I meant yeah fluidity <laughs> Yeah, 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 fluid. That's is a, a surefire way to know if someone's a man or a woman is what fluids fluid. they produce. But even then, it's, even yeah. then, but that's so that and so you're now. So now we're in where we are now, and we there's still that old, the old knowledge in our in our heads. And so we're you know when we meet someone like when we meet someone who's trans, and you know you're like your brain goes well. I've been told that, that you know to to look at that person, they are a man. Yeah. And, then, and, that, and these are the thought processes that are going through and then, you're, and then you start going oh shit I don't want to offend anyone oh shit oh shit I don't know what to do and you end up standing there looking like a proper lemon well and if you've not got again like a sophisticated understanding of, of social not of the situation but just literally if you're not emotionally um, well developed you take that discomfort as well it's, you, you've got to get out the brain doesn't like discomfort obviously the cognitive mm. dissonance so you have to you, you start to internalise the anger and put it out on other people again it's no one's fault you feel bad about something that, for example, I'm not offended by, but you might feel like upset with yourself if you if you mis misgendered me. Yeah. Neither of us is taking the offence, but it internalises in both of us in different ways. Yeah. So we have to keep talking for yeah. that to never happen. And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. How many guards do people want to put up? Like yeah. For for, for you lot, you non-transgender people, to have to jump through. I've got no obstacles for you. I, I love it. I love talking with you. Yeah, that's same. That's it. It's just I, you know, it's just people. We are people, and I like and I like people, and all this other like even again, you know, the conversation I've just had, and he said, you know, one of his mates went, you know what, we shouldn't. He really, we shouldn't even have to have these conversations. You know, everybody should just be accepted 
for whoever they are. You know, it, 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 it's one of them. You know, but but everybody's shouting about it and. Well, yeah, if yeah. it was the, if it was a reload, if it was like The Sims and we start again, sure, because we now know. Yeah. But we, but because we have the history, it's like you know, it's it's not the same thing. But people obviously like to use the race and gender um, sort of spheres and and treat them like analogously, like say, you know, slavery and reparations, and that that happened. So to to now say yeah, but we should all be equal. Yeah, from now that'd yeah. be great. But those things did happen, and they deserve to be like respected that as a part of someone's culture. Uh, gender, what's it called? Like whitewashing history, or saying, well, I don't see gender. Like, well, I paid for some really expensive boobs. <laughs> like, tell me, you don't see gender now? That was bloody hard. <laughs> when did you know that? I mean? When did you realise? Did you did you always sort of know when you were growing up? Did you always have a feeling? This is the thing. What? Because someone, I was talking about this before, and they said, "I was like, but how would you? How? What does it mean to feel like you know, like you feel like a woman?" That's such an interesting thing. Like I've not got, I don't put a lot of stock in what Caitlyn Jenner says. As a, as a, I'm not a big fan of uh, obviously her politics or whatever. But I just watched her an episode of something. Uh, it's a great show. Oh, it's The Cabin with Burt Kreischer. Oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's great. And she says to, can't remember, some comedian, uh, she says, and this comedian's female, and she said, can I ask you a question that you've never been asked before? When did you know you were a girl? And it's obviously, a, like, she's and she's asking a female comedian that, which is a great question, because obviously if you've never questioned it, yeah, you've never had to... Uh, like make an assessment about what you think that is. You just take for granted what that is. Mm. When you're transgender, you get to go through this amazing thing where um, you, you, it's confusing at first, but then you retroactively start to build in your mind what a woman is. Cause you're like, well, I'm one. So that's the first example of what a woman is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What's great when you see transgender people, especially early on, you're seeing an outward projection of what they believe a woman to be superficially. How interesting is that? So you get people that perhaps transition in their 50s and 60s and they're wearing like little hello kitty t-shirts yeah. and skirts that are not of their age in all the like respect in the world wear what you like but there is a there's a sort of an established thing in there like yeah. what little girls wear um and you have to go through that really rocky patch of almost an internalized misogyny of like that you think that women are just these little girls that oh, are like yeah. all ditzy and silly and loads of lipstick and like big earrings or whatever and then you have to like start churning that away but that mental process happens in most of our minds. But in transgender people, it's happening on the outside. So we're seeing what one person is stuck, it, like is deconstructing what a woman is on in what they wear and what they, you know, what they look like. I think that's fascinating. Yeah, yeah. I, I had um, Danny St James on, and we were yeah, talking about she's that. Great. Yeah, she's brilliant. And we were talking about, um, yeah, about the same sort of thing. Like, like she was talking about what it took for her to get where she is, like the version of a woman that she that she feels she is. And then someone made a me- took a put a message up online. Or they qu- they quote they quote it. They put a message online just saying about a thing that Danny had said. And she was and it was a woman, and she was going, "Well, that's not w- what what we all got fake boobs and this and that and that. oh that's a that's a woman, is it? That's a woman." You're like, "Well, that's Jan- that's Danny's that's Danny's version. That's how she feels." You yeah, know? she, then, she yeah. openly says, doesn't she? Yeah. Pamela Anderson, in her mind, is like this uh, thing to aspire to. And Pam Anderson's great. And that is a version of a woman. But like when you are, well, when you are Pam Anderson as well, to be fair, like you are held up as the, as a beacon of femininity, all that fame and like the superficial aspect of it. When you're transgender, you're, and you're in the media, you're like, you have to represent all transgender people and all of the gender you decided to become. Yeah, like yeah. that responsibility. You're like, well, go on then. What do you think we look like? Whatever you, outfit you decide to put on now, that's what you think all of us are. It's, yeah, it's a minefield. Yeah, yeah. And they, and like you said, there's that. Some people, I mean, Danny said this as well. There are some people, and I've seen it as well, some trans, some trans women that they go full on, like it's like almost like, I don't know, like sex worker-esque. It's, hyper feminine like, yeah, yeah really extreme and you're like uh, we, uh, women I know don't dress like that you know? no it's unachievable I think it's really sexy I like but that is that's where it divides I feel, if I feel in a sexy mood yeah but that's not who I am day to day as any other woman has the privilege of doing if she yeah. wants to it's like yeah what picture comes out on your Instagram doesn't define who you are it's just no. how you felt at that moment I mean that F's everything up social media F's everything up that yeah. is really really nice and like uh, yeah she's 
I, I think my life would have, I could, I might have ended up turning out more like her, like if I didn't have, say, uh, music or comedy or something, because I've got, I love her so much. She's an amazing advocate, and she's like, but she has achieved this hyper femininity mm. that I've, I've just internalized in, in my mind. That I will never achieve. So I'm bothered, <laughs> like, because she she's so gorgeous and has such an amazing brain. And like, I don't know, I've sort of resigned to myself to being a bit of a clown, like a sort of genderless clown. And if I didn't have music or comedy to focus on, I might have turned all that energy to trying to change my physicality. Do you mm. know what I mean? This is, is starting to sound like an insult, and it's the exact opposite. I'm trying to give a player a compliment. No, no, sounds, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like I'm saying, you just look at yourself in the mirror all day long, because that's what you've got to do with yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, I fancy her a lot, but she's got a boyfriend. Yeah. Well, that's right, you still fancy her. That's true. Yeah. Why, why did I put a caveat there? Like, I I still you can still it. find people attractive, even if just they're with other people. You just don't act on it. Yeah, yeah. don't do anything about it. That's all right. But you're, <laughs> <laughs> but you're, like you're. This is the thing because you've you've had you've so you've had breast implants and, and yeah, they're, but, right. and you've got so you joke about this on stage because you've still got your penis, <laughs> and now yeah, I'm, but it's where my boobs are. <laughs> Yeah, that I really effed up on the form. I ticked some, some wrong boxes. I want these together. <laughs> yeah, um, and I want those down there. Yeah, um, and that's where a lot of men, or a lot not men, a lot of people, that's Penises. when people start get to com- get confused when you have these conversations. to go, but they're a woman. They try, they they identify as a woman, but they've got a penis. Yeah, and that's where and that's where people start to stumble. It's yeah, the, the falling back on the science, which is not a bad thing to fall back on, right? It's like science we've been taught is is usually quite uh, what's the word when something's yeah consistent, like mm. science, uh, mathematics, like formulas they work. But we're we'll, we're quite happy for a uh, a mum who's adopted a kid to call herself the kid's mum, but it didn't come out of her vaginal cavity. That's pure biology right there. And yet the word mum is quite, it's all right. We, we say, yeah, good on you. You are that kid's mum because it's the actions that she's taken. She's earned it. She deserves it by performing like a mother, yeah. like doing the duties of a mother. And I've fallen into the feminine sphere. Well, I haven't fallen. I've clawed my way up and ladder <laughs> to the feminine sphere. And I behave as such. You know, I think there are inherent traits in men and women. And of course there's outliers, but Men are fantastic, like problem solvers. Not that women don't do that, but it's just genetic that men are problem solvers. They operate better as lone wolves a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and women are good at social connection. We have a very sophisticated way of keeping people together. And the old cliches about things like gossip and stuff, that's just a negative slant on something that's actually a, an amazing strength, being able to keep abreast of all the information yeah. and the emotional nuance of friendships so that things don't fall apart keeping the clan together it's prehistoric and i think that stuff is in there even though there's let's say there's loads of outliers but that's that's my job now i feel like i'm good at keeping friendship groups together i like to show up and you know keep everybody yeah. happy um and when i'm on my own like a lone wolf i don't know i feel a bit more lonely than i used to I don't know mm. if that's that's just me yeah, I understand, I understand that. I totally Are you a that. bit of a yeah. lone wolf? Would you describe um, yourself as such? I, I think I like being on my own, but I think that's because I know I've got people to go back to. Yeah. I think if, yeah, I, yeah. I, if it was constant and I didn't have a choice, I think I'd struggle with it. And I think that's the, that's, that's the difference, isn't it, between being alone and lonely. That's you know, so true. You're, yeah. You've got. I've always got someone, you know, I've got, the, got my boys, I've got Jade or whoever, I've got mates, you know. Where there are some people that haven't got anybody for whatever reason, and that that must be hard. You have a support network, and you also have access to at any given time, like relative to the COVID or whatever, um, a, a platform that you could go to to get a great deal of adulation. Yes. Like siphon it off if you needed it, which is not the reason to do it, but it's certainly a lovely bonus. And that's yeah, at any moment you've built that up, so you can have it. You can uh, yeah, siphon off a little. Yeah. Uh, self. What's the, what's the word? Yeah, adulation. Self. Yeah, a little bit of. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of. It just boys you up a little bit, doesn't it? A little bit of. Oh, that's nice. Well, that's a very gender exclusive term. <laughs> I mean, B. No. <laughs> B O U Y E D. There was. Um, oh, was it about a specific person? A boy. A like boy. Like, um, like a. Oh, you know, right. like a boy. Like a ship's boy. Like a out at sea. Oh, oh like I didn't even realise. Yeah, when, so when you go, I feel buyed by it. Yeah, that's it. I, I, I feel. Boyed up. No, no, no. That, I wasn't being. I wasn't, <laughs> I'm being up. I wasn't being gender specific. I was talking about a boy. Yeah, B O B O U Y. A boy. 
I had a mate once that um, I was sleeping on her couch and I'm really tall. So my feet was off the edge of the couch and she says, oh, you look like a daddy long legs. And then she got all upset with herself <laughs> and she was like, I'm sorry, I meant mummy long legs. I was like, that's not a thing. <laughs> that's not even a thing. <laughs> just just, just made up. <laughs> <laughs> to change science for me. Why is it a daddy long legs? I've never known. I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure I could Google it. I probably should. And uh, I can explain the second half, but yeah, the right thing. <laughs> you know, the long legs bit, yeah, fine. Um, that's, that's legit. That's self-evident. <laughs> Do you feel now you've now you've made the you've you've now you've made now you've, you've transitioned? Do you feel? Do you feel you're in the right place? I mean, do you know what? That's even that's bollocks because no one really feels like they're bollocks are a part really. of it. Yeah, bollocks are a part of it. You know what it is? That's an interesting question because uh, I presume, I don't, I wouldn't presume to know it that you're, you're like the average listener, you're the listenership of your show, but I imagine there's a certain level of like elevated thinking for sure. Like yeah. I imagine that is a big a part of the appeal of your show. But there could be certain people listening thinking, well, she hasn't, has she? She hasn't transitioned if she's still got Willie. Because that's, it's the physical, mm. uh, that completionism yeah. um, of it. I, I don't subscribe to that personally, but then. Penis is not a massive part of my everyday life. Like, I don't shake hands with it. Like, if you did, if it was like you had men and women's hands, then you would have to, because that's like you use them all the time and they're on the show and you interact with them. But, yeah, yeah well, he's not a part of it. I've done all the important stuff. I don't know. I When you're in the media as well, though, you are this floating sort of aspect idea of a thing. You're like this embodiment of a political object and all sorts. I've always, I think of myself as a genderless clown a lot of the mm. time and that that makes me feel a lot better like gives me power and then in social situations um yeah i'm well content yeah you know? well there is that need to that's what humans do don't we we have to pigeonhole everybody yeah you fit in that box that's you that's you that's you and that's how that's how you know that, like i say when i was growing up it's like that's a woman that's a man and then that was it and then, and then there are other people in between but and then someone like eddie is odd yeah would say that there's a, gr- a great video because you feel like he's and he, he is he, and he happily will say as he, like, will accept it because it's of a different time yeah. to people. But also a lot of people that would otherwise be maybe upset with my lifestyle, lifestyle, um, would <laughs> have a lot more respect for Eddie Izzard because it's just so open and has provided so much joy for people about it and has so openly talked about stuff. And it was such a gradual thing that Eddie Izzard's like a, yeah, let him get on with it. You know, just don't yeah. do it near me, sort of thing. Yeah. And I like figures like that. I want to be one of them. I, want, I really like broaching the subject and uh, bringing together maybe like the right and the left, as it were. I really like being in the middle there. That's I'm quite happy to be on the f- battlefield. Like, what's the word? The front line. Yeah. That's that's my place. I'm yeah. really not a very good activist. I, I'm not good in like echo chambers or whatever. No, I don't think those are any good, <clears throat> does it? If you're just yeah. in amongst everyone that agrees with you, I think I want to be at the same place as you. I want to be doing that. I love play gigs that you do well at. You know, I don't like going to places where it is all everyone's already informed about every aspect of it because then there's nothing to broach. Yeah. You know, I like yeah, I like being on the same bill as you. Nah, we should kick yeah. more together. I think we yeah, maybe we'll go on tour. Let's set, let's seal that now that? Yeah. online so that it is indisputable. Let's do it. I reckon <laughs> that, that we'd it. smash that. That'd be great. We would do so well. Yeah, we right, love. Let's do it. All right, and yeah. after this, we'll arrange that. Um, yeah. Ding de- dong. De- <laughs> oh, you're already here. Okay. Um, yeah. I, yeah, and that. It, and so, are you? What? So, how do you identify? Are you a she or a they? No, I'm she. I'm you're just, a she. Like, that's, yeah, it's obviously a big movement. The non-binary people. Uh, yeah. I'm going to just say the most cliche thing, but I've got a lot of non-binary friends, right? <laughs> so, I know, so I know what I'm talking about. But like, yeah, that, that whole thing, the idea of gender being a spectrum, but all spectrums have a sort of a beginning and an end. Not beginning and end, a, a far left and a far right, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. And I'm at one of those ends. So it's like, it they, they are not mutually exclusive. It's not like non-binary people uh, diminish the identities of men and women by saying well we're somewhere in the middle and everybody is so no that's just them we can still be just a lady or just a man yeah like but yeah maybe that i think there's a lot of animosity comes out of people saying well like say if you've been a feminist your whole life and you were a massive part of the feminist movement you know that's your main career she gets annoyed when people say just put on a dress and become a woman Mm. um and she's right in a way because she's pe- she thinks people are talking about sex. She thinks that like genetic sex is yeah. different from gender. So she's right. She's just she sounds like a dickhead when she says it. So like, you can't put on a dress and be a just be a man, uh, be a woman. 
And those people who've made their whole life about being a woman, and then someone's come along and say, actually, there's no such thing. Like, it's very easy, very fluid and very simple. I imagine it is a bit of a thorn in their side, but it's not coming from that place. It's not an attempt to abolish it. Mm. It's just acknowledging there's something in between. To, as a very, very long answer to your very simple question, that now I'm a woman. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I went off. No, no, no. This is this is what this is all about. And I say this all the time. The space is yours. And the reason I wanted to talk to you is because, and I, I said this to Danny as well, I'm not. you're not able to have these conversations anywhere else. You know, you have to come at it fully formed. You have to know exactly what you're talking about. There's no no room for error. And Long form it, podcasting is going to save the world. I, I think so. I think yeah. this is it. This is exactly yeah. why we had these conversations. This is why I because of, when I first saw you, when I first met you, and, and I'm like, oh, hey, Jordan, you're trans, you're trans woman, and then you you were on stage to make your penis, and then you were the, and then I, and I stood there and I could feel my brain going, I I I don't know, I have got questions because of all the old shit I've been that's been pumped into me. Yeah, you know, and, and 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 loads of other people will be in that position as well. You know? I, this is all I new was, to us. Yeah, it wasn't the first time I met you, but this maybe the second time. It was it, late and live in Edinburgh, and it was my plan was that I was going to get nude um, right. for the first time ever on stage because I and I do it all the time now because I love how it, it the whole audience has to flip into I agree or I don't agree. Yeah. And so far it's a hundred percent I agree. This is fine. As I say, I wouldn't um, imagine many people disagree. Yeah, just with what's going on. Yeah, no, that, that's definitely a penis. Now, like, <laughs> it's but they all it it always goes well because it's a hive mentality of well, I can't be the one person that stands up and says I'm leaving. This is ridiculous. Yeah. So it, it's always good. But my point is, you came out and did it before me. And I was like, oh, this is. I was so nervous, and then you did it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do it as well. He's going to be really proud of me. <laughs> the steps. And then I couldn't find you at the end of the night. So I was just, yeah, I was sort of oh. wandering around the place trying to find you to be like, mate, did you see my knob? Uh, <laughs> I've done loved, it as well. I would yeah. have loved to have seen your knob. I got blood. Yeah. The, I was hammered that night. <laughs> you were. It was great. You did a great job. Oh, mate. Yeah. Thank you. I was I so fucking pissed with where I got there. <laughs> and it was. And I'm trying to do the bit. I've got this bit about what I look like naked. And the whole place went mental. And I'm like, I'm not getting naked now. I'm five minutes it's in yeah and that's then, it but then he couldn't get past it which is why i ended up naked <laughs> and then i think i think part of me was just like get the fuck out you fucking idiot i, <laughs> I would have loved to have seen your penis i learned a lot from you about that because i i now i love the joke of i do it quite early on in a lot of sets i'll do a song and then i get nude maybe it's like a 20 or half an hour and then standing there like Oh, where'd you sort of go from here, really? And it no and, yeah. and saying that out loud, and it normalizes so fast. It becomes non sexual within about ten seconds and then it becomes so normal. Yeah. Um and then you just go into regular bits and then you keep coming back like to see a joke about my granddad or whatever, and I'll be like, It's weird that I'm standing here doing a joke about my granddad <laughs> with my novel. It's odd. I did it at um Spank as well. Same that's, joke, that's same really thing nice. happened, and I yeah. had to get like, all my stuff out. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then I, I, I pulled my trousers back up, but I carried on doing the set with no top on. But then, like but, the crusher. Yeah. But then you're like, well, I can't go anywhere after. The people, it, I could just see everyone's faces going, we've just seen his knob, and now he's talking about his kids. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. yeah. But that's it's sweet that you did think to compartmentalised by putting your trousers up for that bit though that's nice that you yeah. separate those two things goes to show what kind of a person I am I pulled my trousers up before I started <laughs> talking about my kids <laughs> not about uh, the opposite of that is very bad very People bad just indeed unpromptedly pull their trousers down and talk about their children <laughs> it's not ideal but it, but all of this, is, this is such new territory for for lots of people. Me, it's, I, 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 I'm, I, and me as well. I'm, you know, and me though. It's well, yeah, of course. Yeah, and that's I, the odd thing. I, I'm now, you know, I, you're a, you're a beautiful woman. You're you're, very, you you're very attractive. You. Oh. I'm now. I experience feelings, and and it's and and my brain is trying to work stuff out. Do you know what I mean? I enjoy your company, and you're a beautiful woman, and you have a penis. And it's and so you know I'm trying to nice, explain it in a, nice yeah and I'm, my brain yeah and my brain's going what are we doing what are we doing what are we doing and I know that's, that a lot of a lot of people will be in that same position. That's a, it's nice to talk to you about it specifically when it's after having got to know you because mm. I had people in the past um, when I first transitioned I, a mate of mine it's it's really disappointing but. It, yeah, it just happens, like the way people's brains think. He said to me in a post, after I'd spent ages getting ready or whatever, and he said to me in his post on Facebook, he's like, 
oh, um, if you get any more attractive, I'm going to start fancying you. No. Oh. I was like, what a thought. Like, yeah. To, it's sort of a horrible thing to say. Do you think that stuff? Of course, think it and and talk about it if it if if it's the platform and intellectually speaking. But it's like I've spent ages getting ready. What you've told me now is that I'm still don't I'm still not up to your standards. Yeah. Like, because of very obvious aspects that are unchangeable as well. Like what the, I don't know the shape of my jaw or the fact that I've got a penis. I don't know. Like yeah. things that are traditionally like traditionally. What a weird word for it. But yeah, just what a way. Well, of yeah, it's like what society that. society tells you. Yeah, if yeah. you if you got more attractive, I'd start fencing you. Imagine saying that to a cisgender woman or a woman born a woman still You'd a woman. Get woman, fucking woman, killed in a bar. Get, hello, love. If you, if you <laughs> get any <laughs> more attractive, <laughs> I'll start fencing well, you. To say, yeah, I, I might start fencing you. Imagine that. A lucky you. <laughs> lucky you. That really hey, you play your cards right, babe. <laughs> yeah, just I don't know what, like, and also like. It, it, not giving any advice, <laughs> no, no, uh, no specifics on how I would reach that point. Uh, what would I need to do? All right, to yeah. Oh, well, really, I'll take a seat and fill me in. Tell me, yeah. What would exactly. I? What do I need to do to, to achieve your the dizzy heights <laughs> of your affection? I tie a little ribbon around my knob, just so it's a little <laughs> bit more, a little bit more affection, affectionate, feminine. A little bit. Of, <laughs> make a knob feminine by putting a, putting a bow around it. That's a really interesting chat, though. I've got to be honest, like, and it's it's in a lot of people's minds. I know it sounds a bit sci- uh, Star Trekky, but I've got a woman's penis. It's like it's so adorable and so sleek and and nice, right? And it's, <laughs> and it's different. And if you put it up against a man's penis, and indeed I have uh, sometimes, but if you do, but I mean intellectually, they're different. They're different things, different species. Yeah, like, they're two different species of. And of oceanic slug. <laughs> I've never heard it called that before. I've got a very feminine penis. It really is. The, there's a difference. And it's just, it's to do with, um, like, what is it? Elastin, the, the hormone in the skin. Right. Or that, you know, that men and uh, women have in different amounts because of estrogen. And yeah. Blah, blah, blah. So, like, you know, older men and older women are different. But then at a certain point, it starts to look the same as well. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's funny, funny how that works. But, yeah, I just, I don't know. It's It's nice. And it's it's diminished in size by about thirty percent since you start taking estrogen. Really? Because because the way uh, hormones work, blood flow to the area, like basically it's like a lose use it or lose it situation. I think. Um, ah. Which is nice because it was. <laughs> this is going to sound so stupid. Here we go. But it was too big for four. You fuck it was, off. <laughs> I know, right. It sounds like <laughs> I'm doing a bit. I'm like. It, I promise you, it was. Oh it was, my knob was, was too big. It was a cumbersome <laughs> thing. I had to lug around with me. It was. It was. Uh, <laughs> It was, um, yeah, an inconvenience because of, I can't believe we're talking about this, but we are now. Like, th- there's a point where there's a law of diminishing returns on, like, uh, penetrative sex. Uh, yes. Where it becomes uncomfortable yeah. for people. And that, I was receiving that criticism quite frequently. And now, yeah, not as much. Like, so that's, what a nice yeah, there events, you, go. you know. What, yeah. what a little bone. What a little I, tell bonus. You, I tell you what, I'm not, well, you know what, we're talking about this now. Fuck it, all right? Um, I was in I was in New Zealand and I was doing and I was, you I got, dirty bastards yeah conquers deep in New Zealand um, <laughs> um, we were we were oh, we were doing a gig and we got reviewed and yeah. the opening the opening thing it's still up online you better find it it says Rich Wilson is packing in the jokes and the trouser department what a thing to say yeah that was the only line of, that was the only line of this review and I've <laughs> that's had it the a first couple, thing they said yeah. <laughs> and I, because I had tight jeans on, and you could see it yeah. all. And then, and I've worn, I've worn once. I wore white jeans on stage, and right. oh, I had okay. there were there were it was I had to in the end I had to put I had to put an apron on to cover <laughs> it up because everyone was just staring and talking about my dick. <laughs> And it just... That's great. I don't Little know. kiss the cook apron. Of <laughs> yeah, it was like that. Happy really <laughs> Kiss the cock. We've done it. Oh, we've we've been, reached the apex. This is, we're being proper lads now. We're talking about We're being cock. pure, I Yeah, we are. We're being, we're being about about knobs. But yeah, I get it. I get it sometimes. <clears throat> yeah. 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 That's yeah. A, you, are, you are blessed in that department. I think that's a really nice word for people to use. I was just... I do some gigs. Um, look, I've never seen like Eyes Wide Shut, but it feels a bit like that. Like I do some gigs where there's it's like it's very have you heard of like torture garden and places like that yeah 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 yeah. So yeah. i did some gigs there where it's a private thing it'd be a dinner party and i'm the 
I'm sort of wheeled out as the bearded woman. It's like, she, oh, I'm nude and I played the piano and it's a novelty for them because they're so fabulously wealthy. And it's like, what mm. could we possibly do? A white tiger descending from the ceiling. <laughs> and I'm that novelty that comes out. And I like it because it's all very, it's all, it's not that it's in good fun. It's that it's all very uh, out there in the open and obvious. Yeah. But I'll show up and I'll, I'll be nude and play the piano. And somebody said to me really sweetly once, she, was, she introduced me to one of the guests before I'd got nude and was like, uh, Jordan will be performing earlier. She's a, She's very blessed, if you know what I mean. I was like, what a nice way of saying it. She just yeah. meant, I've got a willy. Like, that's what a, that's that's quite a sweet. nice willy. Yeah, a, a nice one. And all, yeah, maybe that's what she meant. I just took it as like she was saying that as a euphemism for owning a, a member. Well, she might have been, yeah, because yeah, she was obviously pleased with it. <coughs> if it was the other way around, she'd go, fucking state of this. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's good money and all that sort of thing. Well, wait, I nearly went. <laughs> I nearly Did went you to, to Touch Garden? Nearly went to Touch Garden. Um, it's great. With uh, I won't say who she if she's I don't know if she listens to this but um, yeah we talked about going and uh, and then we looked into it and you can't just rock up no that's the best thing you have to really put an effort into what you're going to wear and you don't have to walk around like a gimp you can wear no. as long as it's spectacular and it's you know you've made an effort and they, and you and you have to go there and get changed don't you before you go before they allow you in that's they, right they so, have yeah, to you, see what you're wearing. It, sometimes I'd ask it to see a bag just for normal security reasons, but that can double up as, yes, I brought a costume. Yeah. Because you could have anyone walking in off the street. Um, but also it's like discouraged uh, um, stag do slash hen yeah. party wear is not, that's no, not good enough. No, no, no. And you, I quite like that because that could be, that yeah. could ruin it. Because some of it, it said you can wear, like the lads, if you're not sure, you can wear top hat and tails. Yeah. You, know, yeah, you something... can wear that sort of thing. I, had, um, I bought a, a brown leather kilt. Oh and, nice! Uh, I was going to yeah. wear that. I had his brown leather kilt and big socks and boots and that, and then a and a top. And I was yeah, going to so but then we didn't so, go. We didn't go. Well, let's sort it out. Let's sort it out. Let's go. No, but that's another thing. Is is that the social aspect of it is a huge part of it? You can spend all night boogie and your little leather kilt off, and and you don't have to partake in any activity because it's not like no. it's out there. There's different areas. There's one room in one of them. I can't. Electro works, I think. Where there's like a fifties. A vibe room no like blitz era room yeah so everyone's in l like latex but of the wartime era and gas masks and you're just listening to like this 50s trip hop music and it's like another world and there's the the sexual aspect disappears yeah you're just like we're just living in this strange fairy tale it's it, it's really fun it well, that's really what fun. i love about that they that the word community comes up all the time yeah and people that you know the people that are into all sorts it's nice to find your it's nice to find your tribe. It's like going back to what you said about that, about the thing that I put up about saying about the, the comedy community. Yeah. And it's the same thing. We found our tribe. Someone else said that. Susan Murray said that. He said, we found our tribe where we felt yeah. we yeah. felt we fitted in. And that's why places like Torture Garden and things like that, you know, these, because you feel like, because you feel like an outcast <clears throat> the rest of the time. The, um, the torture garden, so it's stuff that's unspoken, because the, the implicit becomes explicit, and we never get to share that usually. So then you're there with a load of people that are, oh, that's wonderful. And I think there's a corollary with comedy because there's a lot of mental health crossover yeah. in comedy community, and it's stuff that you are you, is usually implicit and unspoken about. And suddenly you walk into a place and we're all just these wonderful little broken toys. And it's like, oh, yeah. right, yeah. And it's, but it's explicit. It's been literally joked about on stage. So, yeah, that... I think, and also, I reckon there's quite a lot of corollary, uh, crossover with the comedy and kink communities. I yeah. reckon there is, because we're broad-minded people, aren't we? Yes. And yeah. I know a few people, myself included. We've all got a thing. Everyone's got a thing. And, uh, got, and, yeah. and I think, yeah. yeah, I think we are more... We because we're more open minded, I guess. I'm not no disrespect to people that aren't in these industries. We're not saying we're, we're better than everybody just because we do this thing. I just that's not the thoughts of the of the show. That's just rich that's saying that. Just... I, I do think I'm <laughs> head and tails above the rest. Well, that's why <laughs> that's why you're going to be famous, mate. Maybe, yeah. When when those and I, I just uh, like to point out, uh, I call everybody mate. If anyone messages me, you go, oh, you were calling Jordan mate, and she said, she, and I, I call everybody mate. And my my me calling me saying mate is genderless. It's a term of endearment that yeah. I can, I've never understood why that had a gender to it anyway. And when people say dude uh, and bro and stuff like that, it's you, there are two schools of thought. I fall on the one of it. There are terms of endearment that have fallen into like average use yeah like lads uh lads as well there's a sh there's a comedy night amazing comedy burlesque night called lads and it's women run and mostly female performers because it's a tribal thing it's like yeah mm. lads 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 but it's been reappropriated which i love 
I never get offended if people say mate, dude. My brother literally calls me bro, but he fully acknowledges and uses all my pronouns and stuff. But he's yeah. like, yeah, hey, bro. And it's like, yeah, just, and he's my brother, so he's earned it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I like, I, I don't know. I've, I say man. I go, oh, man, quite hey, a man. lot. Yeah, and exactly. He, and I was aware of that talking to Danny. I'd said mm. it, I'd, I remember saying it, and I'm like, in my head, I went, oh, shit. Because I don't mean it. I'm not, again, me saying man isn't, it's more an, ex- an ex- exclamation. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not, it, there's no gender, even though I've said the word man. If you, um, if you've spent the time deconstructing it and you've still come to that same conclusion, then I feel like you've earned it as well. If you, if you're like, actually, what do I mean by that? No, it's, it's, it's an exclamation. Yeah. That's fine. It's different if you were to like be, like throwing out the word geezer or something that's like really obvious or like uh what's what do you pe- like chief things that used to be just male terms all yeah. right admiral no you can be a lady admiral can't you i don't know if it, if it was like yeah it's all the yeah. yeah if something that's like male specific specific, uh, specific. yeah yeah oh um, god but so, i was aware <laughs> i don't, well, don't yeah. i always get i always because i i because with these conversations i just flow and go off I love it. But I think that, and I always worry, I'm like, oh, have I said something? Have I said something? But then I, I know I haven't because I'm not that, I'm not that person. I'm not I, out yeah. to offend, so. I think I, I, I've i learned over time, I like to check in emotionally during long chats for that reason because I worry people are thinking something. Um, I had a lovely little chat with Stu Goldsmith recently. Oh, yeah. And I felt like it was, a, I was aware in advance of, the, him not trying to mention any pronouns and things. Yeah. Which is nice, like different different ways of doing it because it's, you know, different uh, d- different conversations about different things. But, yeah, I just wanted to check in and I, I'll bring it up yeah. to, like, level the playing field just so it's just so it's out there. Um, yeah, but it's different when you've... With, with mates and this is a f- platform, you've got... There's nothing here now that you're, you're so in safe hands now because mm. it's happening in real time, which means people can hear the sincerity in your voice. They know there's nothing untoward. And I know that we're mates. Yeah. We're, this is the safest you could be, oddly, even though we're not looking at each other's faces. I'm looking at a picture of you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I cut the little eye holes out. I like, like Jeepers yeah. Creepers. <laughs> yeah, I like to look through it and pretend I'm you. <laughs> Oh, why do I look like me? You're a very, very beautiful woman. Fuck that. It's you look like, like this what fucking saying. spud. <laughs> it's like what we were saying, though. Like, we're all different people, but, like, mm. bros, bros get to be, you know, the same two people being the same person. I think yeah. me, and you, me and you going out, but just both as you, would be quite a novel, <laughs> quite a novel tour. We couldn't go out as you. You're taller than me. That's true, and I've, I've got quite a balmy bar in it as well. Do I've got, yeah, it's huge, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Russell Brand Beehive. <laughs> But you are, but you are, you're, you've, like I was saying before, you've got to a point where you're more the person that you felt you you were. I've I got, I'm not, I can't lie and say it was like a perfect trajectory. Yeah, I've, no. I got lo- lost along the way, but I'm definitely, um, I, you know, I'm the most pragmatic, but pragmatism is like at the core of my being. And yeah. I've just, I, uh, I serve myself and my community better as a woman. So I'm able to, my output from this me- mechanism that I am yeah. is able to operate better if the input into it is, hello, missus. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I've, been, yeah. I've been filed in the right thing. I was sent to the wrong uh, wrong department and I've just been reassigned so yeah. I can do my job better. And my job is to keep people together, you know, to pres- you know be, be the best me that I can be. And I can do that That's with a, really a nice way. pair of silicone titties. That's a really nice way of putting it. And, what, and like you said before about... Or what, like we talked about, is that you're, you know, there's people, there are like women, cisgender women that are up in arms going, no, that's not a woman, that's not a woman. You're like, yeah, but you're the version of a woman you want to be. So why can't why can't that be the same for everybody else? Yeah, you know? earn it as well. Earn being a woman. Earn being a man. Like you never had to. Like you, you you're a nice person. So I, you've earned it. It's fine. You've done. <laughs> but but in your life, can you say a point where you're like? Oh, I've earned the title of being a man. I've done a man thing. Not a masculine thing, a man thing. Yeah. It's like, what do you even think of that as? Like, yeah, what even is that? If you went out and hunted a deer and brought it home and fed a village, it's, I mean, a woman could do that, but it's a very prehistoric man, man, thing. Th- man thing. I don't know. Like, I, I, yeah. This is me in real time trying to think of an example. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. difficult, of course. I get it. It's like, yeah, it's not the same as me coming back from co-op. <laughs> I've, I've, I've provided for the family. Um, I'm now a man. Yeah, well, no, this is all stuff. One, this is all stuff from the reduced aisle. You tight prick. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, you didn't have to. You didn't run around in the fields for days on end, hunting think, your prey. Maybe fighting a rival tribes like you know like in uh spartacus or not spartacus what's the one with brad pitt where he plays off apollo apollo uh what's that one called um i don't know yeah it's like gladiator like if you were yeah, yeah, yeah. thrust out if you were volunteered for your town to fight somebody from basildon and there was like the one basildon man and you had done it for the honor of your town that's about as mad I as i can think that would be yeah the classic example of what yeah. a man is yeah, and we're not ind- endorsing or saying that that's what a man should no. be, but that is that is the distilled version of what the media. This is just us. This is just us trying to work it out in, like you yeah. say, in real time. <laughs> mythology. I'm going back to old mythology for this. I'm g- you're digging right into the old stuff, <laughs> and that's what they thought a man was. I tell you, it's interesting as well, like what you say about get, about the way you dress, because it's like we Jade and I. There was someone was saying, "Oh, I'm I'm a trans man. I'm a trans man," and they were just wearing jeans and a and a top yeah and then i looked at jay jay was like well that's what i wear yeah that's so what, that jeans means, are the game changer and you go what does that mean i'm a trans man now you know like that clothes <laughs> clothes don't make you don't make you the thing do they i mean yeah yeah there are societal sign you know, sh- things that go right that's what a woman would wear but i've said this before if you've got a pair if you've got a, a bit of material and you made a blouse and a shirt from it that's the same thing yeah, it's still the and, same and for clothing. a very long time. It was literally men and women wearing the same outfits, weren't they? In the eighties, was very a very blousey time. Very blousey without time. repercussion. But if you were a baker, you could go to work in a pair of jeans and a top and still bake bread. I'm not a baker, but I can stick on one of those funny little hats, like little Pillsbury <laughs> Doughboy hats. That don't make me a baker. It's it's yeah. coming from the inside out, and we're all looking at the outside in. And why wouldn't we? Because light travels faster than like. It's like we see before anything else. So, of course, we our first impression of someone is literally the outer layer. There is no mm. other way of doing that. Um, even us talking now, the first things, if this was the first time we met, the first thing that comes out of my mouth isn't going to sum up who I am as a person. It's just, yeah, the fir- our first impression of somebody is, is their outfit. <clears throat> yeah. And their, yeah. That's true. And do you, so are you, this is the other thing as well. So, a lot of people, they just assume that all trans people are gay or and well, are you gay are you is it more fluid than that or are you bisexual it's, it's really interesting because the term changes like i've i've uh i've fancied women my whole life mm. and i'm now indeed married to one yeah but like the i didn't change in the slightest i've literally never had to question my sexuality but the foot but the, the box you tick on like the gum clinic form changes because now it's oh I'm in a lesbian relationship because a woman with yeah. so yeah but nothing else changed but then I realised in time that once you open your mind a bit to the idea that you might be a woman everything else is inconsequential so I'm definitely like a bisexual person now yeah but it but it wasn't for like a really difficult transitional having to figure it out I was like oh no everyone's everyone's a bit tasty <laughs> I quite like it but I like you know what I do like. Uh, and this is a taste thing is I like feminine women and masculine men hmm. um, and I'm I tend to be friends more with masculine women and feminine men and most a lot of my a lot of my friendship group maybe it's because of my job as well in the LGBT community those people I don't have a sexual attraction to as much like sort of more feminine guys and butcher women is yeah. butch an old, old fashioned word I don't want to use the wrong word but more masculine women I just treat them as more that they're um, more more of a colleague relationship right yeah. So you don't you don't jump your colleagues, do you? <laughs> no. Well, you're not supposed to. But some people fucking do. Yeah. Animals. Um, your um, I, this is the thing. People are. I, I've said this before as an example. When I was growing up, went to see Take That. Um, you I show saw, everybody that. Uh, yeah, that's it. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's Humble all I'm going to say. Just uh, yeah. I went to see Take That. Uh, anyway, nice. moving on. Um, no. <laughs> 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 just gonna get it off my chest um, and yeah. it was when Robbie was in them as well this I'm was, glad you told me just, yeah, yeah I feel better now now I've yeah, told yeah. you that's what you are worried about at the beginning of this chat <laughs> yeah. you thought you were going to put your never mind there. anything else never mind anything else I'm like I've really got to tell Jordan I've been to see Take That <laughs> when Robbie was with him as well and that's it when it was proper Take That it was, yeah. and when Howard and Jason came out halfway through and they were dressed in like devil's outfits and they were dancing around with no shirts on. I had a weird feeling. Mm. Well, not weird. Do you know what? No, weird is the wrong word. I had a weird feeling for me. 
It's an atypical feeling for your. It's an atypical. Usual it's a, well, people, you know, obviously people find Howard and Jason very attractive, and I was, I brought, I was like, oh, I'm a, I'm a straight man. I find women attractive, and then I saw those two running out, and I'm like, oh my god, I feel, I feel different. And then I, and then I had to sort of, I felt like I was fighting. I'm like, oh my god. But then, like, as I got older, I'm like, well, yeah, you can f- still find men attractive. The the thing is, when it's a physiological reaction, then there's something else in there because you're like, I didn't give, I didn't like give orders for this to happen. Yeah. Like, you know, when it's a, a funny feeling in your tummy or an influx of fluids to the various <laughs> areas, but then that it's like laughter. It's not policeable, so you have to listen to it. Yeah. It's like laughter. If you intellectually disagree with something, but it makes you laugh, you know, like, oh, I shouldn't have laughed at that. You did though, didn't you? So that's exactly. Either, yeah. Think about it, and if you feel attracted, that's that's nice. Us suppressing that is going to destroy the universe if we yeah. just keep suppressing actual feelings. Oh, absolutely. Um, but it was only, but at the time, because I was only early twenties, I'd never really explored my sexuality up until that point. I just thought, yeah, because why would you? No, it didn't, it didn't yeah. even cross my mind. But so at that point, I'm like, and then I'm like, oh shit, am I? Oh, what's going were on? You, were you brought up with any religious affiliation? No, none at all. None no, at all. They weren't the devil thing that sort of triggered them. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're not supposed to. Like, really, like, yeah, that imagery can be very traumatic for some people or can, like, it can like, be very. Repress guilt or whatever. Like. Yeah, that's true. But there was none yeah. of that. No, I think no. I quite. I like. I thought. I think I quite like what would be seen as wrong and dirty. Like, the devil's always dirty, isn't he? He is. And I think that I've always been attracted to that. We're just like, you know, that's why you want to go to places like Torture Garden. It's a bit more, you see, erotic and I'll tell you what it is. It is it's what every 80s movie thought the future was going to look like. <laughs> it literally looks like that. It is yeah. Running Man. It is everything. <laughs> that is that's what it looks like. Yeah, you're right. It is that. And it was all, that was always seen as, yeah, that was what was portrayed. When they were portraying something that was a little bit sleazy. Gritty. Gritty. Yeah. It was always, yeah, it was always people in really shitty leather gear. Little yeah. flick knife. Always yeah. with a little flick knife. Yeah. Well, look at that. Uh, I mean, look at the in the, in the police academy movies when they yeah. like, end up in the blue orchid and it was like really yeah, yeah. stereo it was like the stereotypes were ramped up Damn, like know, that, yeah, yeah the, the electro <laughs> music is always playing like, yeah and they were all they were all um yeah dressed in like the the like, uh, the, the biker guy from um uh, village people yeah it'd be the sm gear and, yeah. and mad max and all that all got that it's such a it's such a trope now in comedy. There's an episode of Rick and Morty where they all go to the future and they're just wearing explicitly just like bondage gear because that's what was available when they were making these films. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just the idea that we would become so desensitised that that would be normal clothing for everyone is quite a funny trope, isn't it? That they didn't see that in the eighties. They thought they were being really, <laughs> <laughs> really out there. Really, really out there. Yeah. Now it seems a bit silly. <laughs> But these are the conversations we should be having, like this, like this, and and, and the fact that it, on both sides, I should be able to say to you, look, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't really know what to say or do. Well, you know, I mean, yeah, like we said before, yeah, we, you know, these conversations really, we shouldn't even need to be having them, but we do. People not being, not feeling comfortable saying I don't know is a is something that needs to change it's a superpower to be able to say it infuriates people when there's a political argument or something going on you're like what do you think about him you're like i don't know him i, d- I don't know what happened and they're like, what, what, what do you mean i don't know yet yeah, I, need I, don't to, know. I need to learn i don't know and they're like well you, how am i supposed to file you in my brain then on what side <laughs> I, I don't know and the, it's like uh you know someone asks you what you feel like oh, what do you think of Stuart Lee? i don't know him yeah, I don't know. I'll let you know if I, I know. If I if I if I know. Yeah. yeah. If I know, I'll let you know. But until well, then, I don't know. I just want to clarify that sounded like something's going on with Stuart Lee. He hadn't done nothing. That's just popped into my brain. <laughs> you might think that's that's not like a current news story. It's just just a person. Just to say, yeah, Stuart Lee. Nothing. There's nothing, <laughs> nothing. to report. Unless he has. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I'll go. Oh no. <laughs> uh, Jordan, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. You're such a sweetheart. And so are you. And I mean it. Let's go and do some gigs together. Let's do that and let's go to Torch Garden. Also, I didn't even ask, are we on on Membrane or Fembrane right now? Well, I was going to say to you, like, what, 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 this is, now this sounds shit. Because we we talked (laughs) about this the other day before anyone, we've already talked about this before anyone fucking messages me. What, what, should we put it out on, what do we, Fembrane, be Fembrane. 
It's yeah. Well, that's very sweet that you would go to that instinctively, and yeah, that makes sense. But it's the I'm leaving the option open because I did have a man brain for a long time, and now I flood it with estrogen. It operates as a female brain, so um, it's a it depends on how you feel the chat went. Really, if you well, feel like there's it, a lot of talk talk about penises halfway through. There is, isn't there? Which might be a nice little novelty in the fem brain section. <laughs> Yeah, is that you, your call? Thank you, Jordan. This has been fantastic. Uh, where can we find you? I'm here. <laughs> uh, you Fucking can... knew it. <laughs> See, that's the man. That's the membrane stick. I would have gotten away with it too with all a few <laughs> meddling <laughs> podcasters. Uh, I uh, I can be found across social media at Tall Dark Friend. Uh, I know it sounds incredibly pretentious, but I was young when I thought of that. No, I love so, it. Tall Dark Friend, and of course, you can always check out my new show, Transaction, across Comedy Central UK's uh, oh, yeah. social media. It's all right. I'm in it, and I've got to play myself with a different name. <laughs> You're that. I, that's brilliant, and that's that's fucking great that that's got picked up. Very very chuffed to see see yeah. what the future holds. But yeah, it's going to be brilliant. Lady. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> You're amazing, Jordan. Thank you so much. I feel reciprocate reciprocally about you Lovely. in the same way. And Lovely. I'll speak to you very soon. Yes. Let's talk and let's talk your garden and let's have a good time. Mm.